All right, Shalom. I want to give all praise and honor and glory to Yahweh, Bahashim, Yahweh Shai, Bahashim, Yahweh Kapadash. I want to say double honor to the apostles and the elders at Green Goldstone for teaching his word and truth and sincerity and for ruling well. Salutations to my fellow I came across the four corners of the globe, preaching and prophesying in the name of Yahweh, Bahashim, Yahweh Shai. And this is the brother Gabar Yahweh from GMS Hawaii coming to you with another lesson. And this lesson that I'm uh, going to bring it in, uh, bring it in on it, just to, you know, just showing more proof that. You know, these Japhetic people, the ones you call uh, Hawaiians, Samoans, Tongans, Poly Polynesians, Micronesians, Melanesians, that just a little bit of evidence about how they get down because they're not our people, but our people are scattered amongst them, you know, and this is the reason why this word is going to the, the four corners of the earth, man, because when you look at these other nations, they're starkly different than us, you know, but we follow the customs of these nations and it destroyed us. You know, this is uh real quick. This is Jeremiah chapter 10, verse one. It says, hear ye the word which Yahweh, Bashan Yahweh Shai, speaketh unto you, O house of Israel. Thus saith the Lord, learn not the way of the heathen and be not dismayed at the signs of heaven for the heathen are dismayed at them. Right. And we end up learning the ways of the heathen and it brought us very low. You know, when these heathens see things, signs and things that happen in the heavens whether that be a blood moon whether that be a volcano erupting whether that be thunder and lightning and these different types of events that happen natural events that the most high how about you know calls to happen for a sign of times they attribute it to that being a so-called god you know you got like uh the hawaiians they have uh the uh this low the god of creation then they got a kane the god of procreation you know, uh, they got Ku, the God of War. This is what these heathen were doing prior to them getting Christianity. Now you see a whole bunch of these uh, 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 um, Polynesians, Micronesians, Melanesians, these people of the Pacific Isles, they're into Christianity big time here. When you look up the, uh, the top religions in Hawaii, right now, the top religions in Hawaii, uh, says uh the religious composite of adults in hawaii uh non-christian jewish buddhist hindu these are all religions that were introduced to these people okay evangelical protestants christianity is the number one religion in hawaii in the state of hawaii so you got a whole bunch of these people there into evangelical protestantism uh uh black protestant catholic you know, Catholic and evangelical Protestantism are huge, along with Mormonism, and that's big over here. Jehovah Wickedness, all of these things are um, are uh, big here in Hawaii. But it was a point in time where it wasn't, and these, these these this is what they were doing. You know, they went from one idol idol worship to another. You know, and they attributed the things that happened to other people, and this is just the signs to show you that these people are not our people. Because, right, you got, like, a GOCC, uh, they say that the Hawaiians and Tongans are, are the Lord's people, and they're not. Because, you, first of all, they, they come from a group of people, you know. So when you look at, uh, let's look at Hawaiians, for an example, okay. It says, um, it says, Hawaiian religion encompasses the indigenous religious beliefs and practice of native Hawaiians. It, it is a polytheistic and anima, anima, animistic with belief in many deities and spirits, including the be the belief that spirits are found in non-human beings and objects such as other animals, the waves, and the sky. Hawaiian religion originated among the Tahitians. It says it says and and other Pacific Islanders who landed in Hawaii between 500 and 1300 A.D. Today, Hawaiian religious practices are protected by the American Indigenous Religious Freedom Act. Traditional Hawaiian religion is unrelated to modern New Age practices known as Huna. You see, and this is what you have here. This Huna is the word adopted by Max Friedman Long in 1936 to describe his theory of metaphysics. Long cited what he believed to be spiritual practices of the ancient Hawaiians, Kahunas, priests. And in these nations, the reason why they do the things that they do is because they are without the Most High. 
when you go into the scriptures, you understand that these nations don't have the most high dealing with them. So they deal with idols, work, craftsmanship, work of the hands. This is Wisdom of Solomon, chapter 13, verse 1. It says, Surely vain are all men by nature who are ignorant of the Most High. And these other nations, they are ignorant of the Most High. Giving you an example of these different um, 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 Hawaiian so-called gods, which are nothing but idols. They don't exist. They don't hurt nobody. These, they, don't, they can't do anything. But they are revered amongst their people. And even Christianity, they, uh, Esau went about, which we'll get into it a little bit in this lesson, Esau went about the world, giving the world his version of the Bible, his understanding of the Bible, which is totally carnal and not spiritual, okay? Because when you read the scriptures, I don't care if you read the King KJV 1611, if you read the New Improvised Version, you're going to find out that the Most High is only dealing with one people, and that salvation is for one people. But yet, because Esau through his his so-called um, because Esau through his so-called missionary work, he lied to the other people and told them that look, salvation is for you too, you know, and it's not. This is back in Wisdom Solomon chapter thirteen verse one. It says, "Surely vain are all men by nature who are ignorant of the Most High, and could not out of the good things that are seen know Him that is." So them seeing the the clouds, them seeing the volcanoes erupt and, and things like that, waves of the ocean. They can't see those goodly things that Yahweh Bashan Yahweh exists. So they have to uh, they have to attribute it to an idol, like uh, uh, Kanaloa, the god of the sea. Then you got uh Wakia, the god, the sky father. Then you got uh 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 Kamaholi the shark guy, you know? So they attribute these idols and these th they, they attribute the natural things that occur in the world to idolization. And this is, again, these are more signs to show you that these are not our people because we didn't do this by nature. We did it when we went off, but this is not something that we were given because we're not ignorant of the most high. So again, surely vain are all men by nature who are ignorant of the most high the Heavenly Father, and could not out of the good things that are seen know him that is, neither by considering the works did they acknowledge the work master. Right, so they looked at these works and they didn't acknowledge the Most High. Unlike us as Israelites, when we see these beautiful things in the earth, we we give those blessings and we give those thanks in their creation to Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai. But deem either fire or wind or swift air or the circle of the stars, or the violent water, or the lights of heaven, to be gods which govern the world. And this is an example of that, right here. Here it is. You got the sky god. You got the the, the god of sorcery, the trickster god, the trickster demigod. You got a god of the winds, a god of the sharks, a god of the arc uh, uh, arc agriculture, a god of war, a god of procreation. A God of creation. These people, these are what they're into, man. And it's just a short list. You know, because it's, it's mythology. And when you look up the term mythology, let's go to the Etamani real quick. And let's look up what mythology is. Because mythology isn't real. Mythology. Slocky. Myth. Tha, myth, tha, lo, she. Why is it not showing up? So let's look up myth. Myth. Why is it not showing up? What is going on here? I know that's a real word. Okay, so I guess it doesn't want to show up on me for some reason. Anyway, the term myth. Myth, a traditional story, especially one concerning the early history of people or explaining some natural or social phenomenon, typically involving supernatural beings or events or ancient. It says uh, a story of folktale. So something that's just not real or something that has bits of 
relig- uh, well, real things in it, but and, and ultimately it's a lie. Man. It's something that's made up. You know, it's something that's made up. It's not something that's real. All right. The definition of a myth, again, folk tell. So these things are something that's not real. And that's what these nations worship. They worship things that aren't real. They don't have no true understanding. And when you go into the basis of their religious uh, or their priestly works, what you find out is that it's nothing but something that's just made up. Going back to uh, Wisdom of Solomon, chapter 13, verse 2, it says, But deem either fire or wind or the swift air or the circle of the stars or the violent waters or the lights of heaven to be the gods which govern the world with whose beauty, if they being delighted, took them to be gods. You know, let them know how much better the Lord, Yahweh Shai, of them is. For the first author of beauty have created them. See? And that's how we know that the again, these people that you call uh, uh Hawaiians, Moans, Tungans, Polynesians, Micronesians, Melanesians, that they're not our people and they're not the most high's people. The Lord has one one nation. He don't deal with the whole world. Okay? And that's why the whole world doesn't know. Him. And for a time when we were asleep, we didn't know the Lord until we heard his voice through the apostles and the elders, and we were woken. This is um, 2 Edris chapter 6, verse 54, right? 2 Edris 6 and 54. It says, And after these, Adam, and after these, Adam also whom thou madest Lord of all thy creatures, of him come we all, because we all come, all the people that are on the earth come out of uh, the three sons of Noah, Shem, Ham, and Japheth. And right now, currently, as it stands where I'm at right now, I'm I'm amongst the children of Japheth, the so-called Polynesians, Micronesians, Melanesians, you know, Pacific Islanders. These are the sons and daughters of Japheth. It says, "Of him come we all, and and the people also whom thou hast chosen." So, out of all these people, the Lord chose a people. Who is the people that He chose? The Israelites. He didn't choose. The whole world. So when you read the scriptures and you talk about salvation and you talk about God's people, his people, his children, when you when they're talking about that, that's referring to the Israelites. It's not referring to the other nations. The second chapter five, verse. Um, five, verse six. So I can just bear with me. Um, second Edris chapter, second Edris chapter five, verse twenty-three. It says, "And said, O Lord, that bearest rule of every wood of the earth, and of all the trees thereof, thou hast chosen thee one vine, and of all the lands of the whole world, thou hast chosen thee one pit. We know that one pit is the land of Israel, and of all the flowers thereof, one lily, and of all the depths of the sea, thou hast filled." The one river, that's the river Jordan, and of all the builded cities, thou hast hallowed Zion unto thyself, and of all the fowls that are, that are created, thou hast named thee one dove, and of all the cattle that are made, thou hast provided thee one sheep, and among all the multitude of peoples, thou hast gotten thee one people, and unto this people whom thou lovedest, thou gavest a law that is approved of all. And we know, we know that that uh, we know that that law, that law, was given to the children of Israel. It wasn't given to these other nations. So going back in the second Edges chapter five verse fifty four, and after these, Adam also, whom thou madest the Lord of all thy creatures, of him come we all. And the people also whom thou hast chosen. All this have I spoken before thee, O Lord, because thou madest the world for our sake. The earth was made for the sake of the Israelites. As for the other people which also come of Adam, thou hast said that they are nothing, but be like unto spittle, and has likened the abundance of them unto a drop that falleth from a vessel. So when you look at these other nations, the Heavenly Father, 
<clears throat> Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai, he doesn't uh he doesn't deal with these other nations. Okay? He said that they're like spit, then like nothing. And when you read Isaiah, was it 40 and 17, it tells you that the nations are are are, are, are nothing, are, are as less than nothing, and count it as a small of the dust. So when you look at something that's count counted as nothing and less than nothing. You're not going to give them the law. You're not going to give them the true understanding of, of the life of the world. Why? Because you're not dealing with them. And that's what, so because of that fact, these other nations had to go a different route. And so what they do, they, they deal with the powers on the left-hand side. They deal with um, um, idolatry, okay, which is a sin. So going back into uh, Wisdom of Solomon chapter 13, it says, with whose beauty uh, verse verse four. But if they were astonished at their power and virtue, let them understand by them how much mightier he is that made them. For by the greatness of beauty of the creatures, proportionably the maker of them is seen. But yet for this they are less to be blamed, for they preadventure ere seeking the Most High and desirous to find him, for being conversant in his works. They search him diligently and believe their sight because the things are beautiful that are seen. Howbeit, neither are they to be parted. For if they were able to know so much that they could uh, aim at the world, how did they not sooner find out the Lord thereof? So here it is. They're looking for these things. They're looking for the, uh, the spiritual creator of these things, but they can't find it. Why? Because it's not given to them. All right. This is the book of uh, Amos, chapter three, verse one. All tribes are guilty. This is talking about the tribes of Israel. All right. So it says Amos three and one. Hear the word that the Lord has spoken against you, O children of Israel. We are the children of Israel. The so-called Negroes, Latinos, Native Americans, Seminole Indians, and those that go back to us on their father's side, but look like the other nations. We are the children of Israel against the whole family, which I brought up from the land of Egypt, saying, you only have I known of all the families of the earth. Therefore, will I punish you for all your iniquities. And so when these other nations get into Christianity, when these other nations open the Bible, they don't read those scriptures. A lot of them like to say they pertain to the New Testament and talk about how Paul, you know, uh, uh, spoke to the Gentiles. But he wasn't speaking to these people. He was speaking to the Israelites that were in a Gentile state of mind. He wasn't speaking to the natural Gentiles. Okay? And to prove that, all you got to do is go to the book of 1 Corinthians, go to chapter 12, and go to verse 1. And it says, Now concerning spiritual gifts, brethren, I would not have you ignorant. Ye know that ye were Gentiles carried away unto these dumb idols, even as you were led. So what made us become Gentiles? First of all, following after these dumb idols, these different uh, um, things that you see in the world that these other nations worship. And when you look at all the heathen nations, when you look at all the heathen nations, all of them had a pantheon of gods, whether that be the Japhetic people, whether that be the Elamite people, whether that be the Moabite people, the Ammonite people, all these people have a myriad of idols that they worship. And because we went off into this, we became Gentiles in the sight of the Most High. But Paul and Yahweh Shai and Paul and the apostles, they came to what? To bring us back to the truth, back to our way of worshiping and our our worshiping our power, our power, the living God, Yahweh Bashim, Yahweh Shai. You know, we only got one power. The Lord said, what? He's not going to give his glory to another. This is um, Jeremiah 9 and 23. Thus saith the Lord, let not the wise men. Oh, sorry, that's not it. This is uh, Jeremiah 9 and 23.
This is uh, Isaiah 42 and 8. Isaiah 42 and 8. It says, I am the Lord, Yahweh Bashi That is my name. And my glory will I not give to another, neither my praise to graven images. And that's what we did. We gave the praise of the Lord to graven images, following after the customs of these heathens. And this is what made us Gentiles. But the heathen, they don't have these things because it's not given to them. So Jeremiah 10 and 1, hear ye the word which the Lord spake unto you, O house of Israel, thus saith the Lord, learn not the way of the heathen, be not dismayed at the signs of heaven, for the heathen are dismayed at them. You see? So we're not supposed to learn the way of the heathen, but we did. And this is what caused us to become Gentiles in the sight of the Lord. So when you look at these other nations, now they got this Christianity, this, this Edomite uh, version of Christianity, okay? And they believe that they have a part in the house of the Lord and in the, and in the, in the uh, salvation of the Lord, but they don't. This is Jeremiah 3 and 23. Truly in vain is salvation hoped for from the hills and from the multitude of the mountains. Truly in Yahweh, our God, is salvation of Israel. So salvation is only for Israel. So you got these other nations, they get into Christianity in the 1800s. I typed in a question, when did uh, Christianity come to Tonga? Well, this began in the late 1700s and continued in the early 1800s. That's, it says Christianity has been an important aspect of Tongan society, politics, and culture since its introduction by the Western missionaries. And we know that the Western missionaries are Edomites. They are not Israelites. They didn't have the truth. They still don't got the truth. Western missionaries, right? These were Edomites that went to different places in the world with Catholicism, Protestantism. Yeah, and they brought they brought these heathen their ver their version of Christianity, which which is this Edomite version, so called uh, uh, savior some dude named Jesus Christ. But their version of that is corrupt because the real, to be a Christian, you have to be an Israelite. You cannot be a heathen. You have to be of the blood of, of the lineage of the children of Israel on your father's side. So it says, this began in the late 1700s and continued into the early 1800s, starting with the London Missionary Society. Starting with the London Missionary uh, Society, followed by Free Wesleyan Missionaries. And I guarantee you that none of these uh, Free Wesleyan, uh, Wesleyan Missionaries were Israelites. But they were Edomites. See? Wesleyan Methodists. Edomites. And they brought their version of Christianity where it had nothing to do with the scriptures. But they taught it to these heathens here in the Pacific Isles. So then I also typed in, when did uh, uh, Christianity come to Hawaii? The first Christian missionaries to Hawaii arrived in 1820 from, the new, from new England. And it was their message, even more their lifestyle that impressed the new, new king, Lee, Liho, Liho, son of Kamehameha, and Kamehameha widow, uh, Ka, Kaakumanu. And they still reverence these people. And this is the uh, this is the article right here. This is a picture of an Anglo-European artist depicting Queen Kamehameha. I mean, Queen Kaahumanu, this big old Japhetic demon, right? <laughs> it says, uh, <laughs> it says the first Christian missionaries came in, came to Hawaii arrived around 1820. So before 1820, these heathen didn't know anything about the scriptures. Now you see them packing churches every Sunday or whenever, Saturday, whatever they so-called worship. And they actually believe they got a part in this. And they don't. 1820 and new, uh, from New England. And it was their message and even more their lifestyle that impressed the new king, Leho, Leho, son of Kamehameha and Kamehameha's widow. When the young king, Leho, Leho, died, her power and influence enabled her to abolish old rules of discrimination against women, even worship 
of the traditional Hawaiian gods. Now, for some people who claim that the uh, these people are our people, you know, you got that GOCC, uh, GOCC, 12 tribes chart that they have primarily because you got a lot of people that follow them. They actually believe that shit. Right here, they say that uh, Naphtali, oh, no, that's not it. That's not it. GLCC. Right here. You get it? Yeah, right here. This is a GOCC <laughs> chart. They Out of all the Polynesian people, they're going to pick out the Hawaiians and Samoans and call them the tribe of Naphtali. And they're not. They don't have the, their customs don't mirror our customs. Now, some of the things that they have, it, it kind of like seems similar, but it ain't it ain't the same thing. It says right here. Um, let me see. I had read it earlier. Right here, it says, uh, it says, like Pele Pele, which is a, a volcano goddess. It says, uh, I'll start it right here. It says, these Hawaiians were poly. Oh, I'll just start right here. It says, a recent trip to Hawaii to visit family drew my attention again to Hawaiian religion. Original Hawaiians are Polynesians who came to the Hawaiian Hawaii from Tahiti, Samoa, Eastern Islands, and other Pacific Isle, Islands between 500 in uh, 1300 AD, these Hawaiians were polytheists who worshiped and built shrines to various nature deities, idols. But on a big island of Hawaii, they came to revere especially Pele, the fierce and violent goddess of volcanoes, which that doesn't exist. This is all out of somebody's mind. It says, like Pele, Hawaiians themselves resorted to violence on occasion, and their religion made provisions for a place of refuge for the for perpetrators of manslaughter or homicide, which in it, uh, it says the arrangement was not unlike the ancient Hebrew provisions of cities of refuge established to forestall hasty revenge and allow for a more cool headed system of justice to take its course. So we know that those cities of refuge were set up for people that committed uh, murder. I mean, committed a, a, a death by accident, you know. And it was to forestall the just, like they just said. So the, the family wouldn't catch revenge on them. They would run to these cities of refuge. But they try to apply the same thing that the uh, heathens were doing, which it was totally off to us. So then you get GOCC, they use that same claim. This is the reason why these people are our people. And it's not. They're not our people. They have different customs. And we're, we're going through some of those customs. And it says, it says, um, Hawaiians also possess a system of kapus or taboos. Certain holy places were out of the bounds for all but credentialed holy men. One pattern of taboos prohibited women from eating foods that for some reason were classified as male. In addition, this taboo required separate cooking utensils for food of men and women and overrighteous, as well as segregated eating. You know? So again, these people didn't know nothing about Christianity to what? Uh, uh, these missionaries came. So then you have uh, when did uh, uh, well, sorry. so then I looked up when did Christianity come to Samoa? It came here 10, 10 years later. Christianity was already present in Samoa in 1830 and William and William and Milio Toa, although important and intriguing figures, played relatively modest parts in the full story of the establishment of the new religion. So these people didn't even know anything about the Bible until 1830. The Samoans and the Hawaiians. So how could they be our people? But when you look in the cultures of, of the Israelites, the so-called Native Indians of Americas, you look at the so-called West Africans, we, we, we had all of these things, not these things. Well, our people were going off in the idol worshiping, but our people had a huge remnant of our old culture, which is that of uh following the customs and laws of Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai, right? So then you got, even in Samoa, they got prominent, prominent entries in Samoan mythology. You got all of these different idols, man. All these different idols. Hawaiian religion, Proverbs and mythology, Polynesian mythology, you know, Polynesian narratives and cultures of 
Samoa, you see? Religions of Samoa, you see? Religions of Samoa encompasses a range of groups, but 98% of the population of Samoa is Christian. Why? Because after 1830, that's when he got introduced to it by the missionaries. Following the distribution of Christian, Christian groups as of 2011, Congressional Christian Roman Catholic, Congregational Christians Roman Catholic, the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter Day Saints, Methodist Assemblies, and a God of Seven, of God and Seven Day. So these people they're into that. This is what they're into now, because they got to introduce them. This is Jer Jeremiah three and twenty three. Truly in vain is salvation hoped for from the hills and from the multitude of mountains. So for you heathen nations that you're you're thinking about salvation, you're thinking about the coming of our Lord, the how about Shimi how it shine, which you call him God and Jesus. And you think he's a so-called white man, you're gonna be sore disappointed because salvation is not for you. Truly, the Lord our God is the salvation of Israel. In uh, Psalm chapter 147 and 19, He showeth His word unto Jacob, His statutes and His judgments unto Israel. He have not dealt so with any nation, and as for His judgments, they have not known them. Praise ye the Lord. This is why they do what they do. Because they don't know the Lord's judgments. They don't know his commandments. They don't know his, his, his prophecies. They don't know any of that. And when you go into these variations of Christianity that these heathen are into, they don't even talk about prophecy, man. You see? So the Lord hasn't dealt so with any other nation. He, he says, he showeth his word unto Jacob, his statutes, and his judgments unto Israel, one nation. Okay? It was Ezekiel chapter 3, verse 5. For thou art not sent to a people of a strange speech and of a hard language, but to the house of Israel. Not to many people of a strange speech of, of a hard language, whose words thou canst not understand. Surely had I sent thee to them, they would have hearkened unto thee. But the house of Israel will not hearken unto thee, for they will not hearken unto me. For all the house, all the house of Israel are impudent and hard-hearted, you see? And our people are the most hard-headed, stiff-necked people in the world. They don't want to accept the Bible. They don't want to accept the truth. They don't want to accept the word. I was watching a video with Apostle Gabar from back in the day, and he was out there speaking out there, I think it was in Bridgeport, Connecticut. And he was saying, we're out here telling our people that we're the greatest people on earth, where that we're the sons and daughters of the living power, how about Shana was shot? But they don't want to be that. They want to be everything else. You want to be an African. You want to be a Muslim. You want to be a Christian. You want to be a part of these other nations because you see these other nations prospering in the world. So you think if you're, if you're doing what they're doing, then you're going to prosper too. But you're not realizing that you are under curses because you disobeyed the law of our living power. Yahweh Bashem Yahweh was shot. So the Lord didn't send us to the other nations because had he sent us, had, had he, the Lord truly sent us to these other nations and to tell them, what we're telling you Israelites, they would have accepted it and they would have followed the way. But the Lord didn't send us to them. Malachi uh, 1 and 14. But cursed be the deceiver which have in his flock a male and vow a sacrifice unto the Lord a corrupt thing. For I am a great, I am a great king, saith Yahweh Bashem al host. My name is dreadful among the heathen. It's another reason why the heathen can't call on the name of the Lord. Or don't call on the name of the Lord, especially in mass. See, they call it on God and Jesus, and nothing's happening to them because those things don't exist. The term Jesus, when you type in Jesus, what comes up? A so-called white man. And all of these, all of these uh, heathen nations, that's what they call it on. They call it on Jesus, and they actually believe that the so-called white man is God, and his son is the Lord, and, and the white man is the son of the uh, heavenly Father. But they don't know this is a cursed thing. The Lord didn't send his his son, the Heavenly Father didn't send our Lord, Yahweh Shah, to come down on earth and look like a leprous man. Because this is what true leprosy is. You don't die from leprosy. Like those bumps and all those ailments. And those are plagues. Well, this is a plague too. But this is a plague that you're able to live with, man. But this is, this is the image that the, the world reverences and reveres, especially amongst Christianity. And even our own people are into this shit. Psalm ninety six and five. I'll start at four. For the Lord is great, and for the Lord is great and greatly to be praised. He is 
to be feared above all gods. For so for Yahweh, because the term right there is Yahweh, his son name is Yahweh Shai, is great and greatly to be praised. He is to be feared above all gods. For all the gods of the nations are idols. But Yahweh, the Lord, made the heavens. He made everything. So when you look up that term for idols, the Hebrew word there is Ah la y'all, it says of not good for nothing, worthless, false gods. And that's what these is. But these heathen, they, they revere these shits. And if you were to walk into their, their territory when they were worshiping these idols, man, and you'd have knocked that shit over, and they'd have lost their mind, man. Because they really believe that this shit is real. You know? And this is nothing but. This is an artifact made with hands of a, a cunning crafter, you know, a rotten piece of wood. See? Rotten piece of wood. That's all that shit is. So, yeah, I just wanted to bring this out, man. I thought this was something that was interesting. Um, I hope you were edified. You know, these people are not our people, but our people are scattered amongst them. So for you Israelites that are scattered amongst these Japhetic people, hey, wake up and come on out. Call on the name of Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai, okay, and believe in his truth, man. The Lord willing you'll be saved and repent. It's with that, Shalom on to the next.